All right, boxing heads, you guys want to call in? Call in at 347-215-7598. We do got a few guys still on hold. I want to talk boxing here on Leaving of the Ring, but uh, Gabriel Matoya has just clicked over so we can bring on our next guest, guest Ann Wolf, who's going to be talking to us a little bit about James Curtin. Uh, and Dave, uh, it's a woman that needs no uh, introduction. Certainly is one of the, the greatest female fighters of all time, multi-division champion, I believe simultaneously. Uh, is also the trainer of one James Kirkland, who she's recently uh, rejoined uh, as part of his team uh, as, his, as his trainer. Uh, how did you guys reunite? Uh, how, how did that happen? And, and what's it been like uh, since you guys have been back together? Uh, well, Mike called me and he said that uh, James wanted to talk to me, so I gave my number and he just started talking. And I was like, you know, they asked, well, what, did he want? A lot of people asked me, uh, did I want to go back to him? And I never left him. But uh, what a lot of people don't know is all the kids in our gym is like inner city kids. So we have about 15, 20 kids, and they go to prison, they come back, they go to wherever, they come back. They always, the gym is always open. So James knew he could always come back. Whatever problems he was having, he needed to go deal with his problems that he needed to deal with. And the gym was always open because the gym is just not. Like James trains here, we've been together for years and years and years, and it's, it's not just like a boxing relationship. It's like a, a, we in our gym, everybody's closer than that. And when, and when he came back, it's like it's almost like he never left. It just fell right back into place, like he never left. Andrea Kramer asked me because uh, we're gonna be on Real Sports QV. She asked me. She said, uh, "Did he say we're sorry?" I said, no. She said, should he have said he was sorry? I said, no. Because <laughs> why you have to go through all that, just coming back, and if it falls back in a place like it was, he had enough respect to know that come back when you're ready. And I had enough of respect for him to say when you're ready, then you come back, and everything is going to go right back to the way it was. You, you, did you see his other three fights uh, when he came back? And, and if you did, what was your assessment? What, what did you see? Was he different? Did he lose something in prison? Uh, did they rush him back? Uh, no, when, no when, when, when people said, did James do something in prison, you could tell they didn't do their homework on James Kirkland. That means they don't know him really well because James went to jail before, way before that, and he right. stayed out of boxing for three years. And right. he came back even hotter than when he left. So this was less than three years. So it wasn't about what he lost in prison. It's about that you have to be in condition, you have to be ready, you have to train, and in order to be a killer, you have to train to kill. A lot of people think boxing is playing. Somebody is trying to hit you in the head, in the face. They they want to win like you want to win. They want to go home and say they won just like you want to go home and say you won. So what are you going to do that's going to go above and beyond what they're doing in order to make you become better than them? They want to do the, they trying to do the same thing you're doing. So when I seen him, I just knew that I'm not saying he lost nothing in prison because now that he's back, he didn't. I'm not saying that the, the guy didn't train him or coach him because I wasn't there. I'm just saying that when you come to my gym until you throw up, until you act like you're passing out, and until you take a, a whole bunch of ass whooping enough to make you realize that this is for real, I don't, you know, then I know you're ready. How shocked were you to see him lose to Ashita? I mean, I would have been shocked to see him lose to anybody. Ashita, everybody want to say, well, Ashita didn't have this, or Ashita didn't have Ashita was a man like James Kirkland was a man. Ashita wanted to win like James Kirkland wanted to win. Ashita beat James Kirkland, point blank. By whatever means he beat him by, he still beat him. He won, point blank. What can you take from him? He won. He got to go home and say, I won. Why should I give an excuse why Ashita didn't win? He's a man like you are. You you don't train for the, if you got a 99% chance of winning, I don't train for that 99% chance. I train for that 1%. And I don't think that's what James did. He didn't get ready for that 1%. He just took up on that 99% and was like, I, I'm, I'm good with the 99%. So now that he came back to the gym, you need to train for the 1%. The hell with the 99% that you're going to win. When you when you got James back, a trainer always has diff- different methods and different styles of training a fighter. So is it a hard transition to try to mold him back to what you ha- had him? I mean, has that been an effect here between you guys? Or has he just kind of fell right?
right back into what you guys what you guys had left he fell off. Right, he fell back right back into what we do. We don't when we get ready to spar, we're not sparring like oh jab. So we're sparring like knock him out, keep punching him until he falls on the floor and get in a fetal position or say I quit. So I line guys up and I make him fight still. Or I let them fight him. And I tell them to beat the hell out of him. And don't stop. Just keep beating him. And if he can't take it in this gym, if he can't take it in the ring, then he don't, he's not ready to fight. So the first week he got back, he was sh- he was shell-shocked. To me, he was like, was like in a different, like, you know, but after that first week, mm-hmm. it's been one, two, curse. It's been about, I bet you he didn't crack about four people ribs. Within wow. the last 10 days, he cracking ribs. He's knocking people out with 16-ounce gloves on. His time is coming back because there's only one way to train in my place. Either you're going to whoop some ass or you're going to get your ass. That's the only way I know how to train. I'm not going to baby you and go, oh, let him do No. Point blank, no. <laughs> Either you got to bring it or go home. You know, his his comeback was anticipated, but... You think the rush of amount of fights that he was put in was that too much? You think? No, I mean, no, no. It was perfect. James is the type of fighter. The more fights he have, the hotter he gets, the better he is. But if you're not getting yourself in condition, if you're not mentally focused, if you're not mentally prepared, that's why I like old school boxing. They wonder why they could fight that many fights. They would fight two or three times a week because they were used to it. When we train, I would train to spar us every day. James, when he first come back trying to spar every day, he his whole body was sore. He couldn't hardly move. Wow. We spar at least four or five times a week, so we do it. And the reason we do it is we do it over and over and over and over and over until our body, our muscular structure, our frame, everything gets immune and used to sparring five times a week because that's going to set you aside from a sheeta. Hmm. Do you think it's important for him to fight that guy again? To fight Ashita. It, it could be, and it, it could be, or could be not. If Ashita is going to continue to fight, and he and he wins his next couple of fights, and he's still winning, that means he got something. So James is going to have to show that this, you know, I, I am capable of beating this man. Now, if Ashita go lose the next three or four fights, no. Right. So either he's going to have to get something bigger. And, you know what I'm saying? But if, yeah. if this guy is continuing to win, I think he needs to to uh, rematch him. If the guy's proven, I'm still winning. I'm still, you know, I'm still here. Of course he needs to. But if the guy goes and loses three or four fights, what the, is he going to pay or show that uh, for James to fight him? But yeah. I said if that guy wins his next two or three and James wins his next two or three, yes, he should because he has done what nobody else has done. And he deserved that chance to say, this wasn't a flu, this wasn't this. I'll, I'll whoop James Kirk in the ass and I can do it again. But the difference is going to be that Ann Wolf's going to be in the corner. A lot of ways, you know, James has been compared to as uh, to Mike Tyson. But now that he's lost, and you've got a lot of fight fans wondering and questioning, because the stigma of James was that he had this fear factor about him, but that, that is now out the door. Does that make your job tougher? Guess what? I'm laughing. You know why? Half of the sparring partners that came, they were like, yeah, we'll come. (laughs) (laughs) One dude just came. He went one round and got knocked smooth out. Then another dude came. He went got knocked. They were like, I thought that was who we were going to see on TV. So in Texas, (laughs) guess what? The fear factor is back in Texas. You know why? (laughs) Because they're like, who in the hell is that? That's not what I've seen on TV. Right. I said, you didn't see me on TV. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm glad they're not scared. That gives me that gives me something I didn't have at first. Uh-huh. I couldn't tell you. Now I, I am so glad that nobody's scared of him. I am I am so happy. But guess what? Now we get to take advantage that they're going to come. And I tell you what, I'm not saying that he's going to do this, this, and this, but... If James keeps going at the pace he's going from the training camp, 
he he the field factor will be back very soon because I'm telling you that man is is starting knocking people out in them six things, and you would not believe the first week he got his ass beat up. He got right. He got beat up the first week. The first week and a half, it's like he got he got yeah. literally beat. Now he just thought he's knocking them out. I'm I'm serious. So I'm glad I'm glad about that. And usually when somebody gets beat like that, it does something to their confidence. It does something to, you know, it's like that egg been cracked and you can't put it back together again. Not from what I'm seeing because I'm today I had to like literally get in the ring and go no 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 no. You know what I'm saying? And the first yeah. week I, I wasn't having to do that. Second week I wasn't having to. I didn't have to start getting in the ring and go, no, 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 don't knock him out, don't knock him out. I mean, you're not going to see what you see in the game, and I guarantee you that. <laughs> now, you, you might not see what was when he was in his prime, but he well back on his way. I'm, I'm, Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that because what a lot of people in Texas or anywhere that knows Ann Wolf, they know that I won't even go sit in that corner if I don't think you're ready to, to kill or be killed. So James was ready to kill when he fought a cheetah. But he he was ready to kill somebody, but but he wasn't ready to if, if he got killed. Right, he right. Got full circle to the kill or be killed, not just kill. And if you know that you might get killed, you gonna fight like you out your mind, because you understand that you were him. He didn't have that on his mindset. Well, and hey, we thank you very much for taking the time and speaking to us here on Leaving the Ring. Um, it was our pleasure. It was great having you on. Want to have you on again? I mean, um, yeah, I. I and I, I, I said, the only thing I like to say is to the fans, you know, it, it seems like James is just a ruthless person, and he came back. He didn't give a sheet of his just due because a sheet of did beat him, and we don't have to say what she you know a sheet of beat James Kirkland. That's point blank. That's just the way it is. Um, now that I'm back, we're gonna try to go and be good human beings first, and we're gonna be good people first, and we're gonna be killers in the ring, and that's what we're gonna try to do. And we're going to try to build a fan base up to where people understand we're just normal people trying to do something that's not normal. 